Lane Kiffin officially becomes the 39th head coach in Ole Miss football history. Details on the newest Rebel hire coming up later in sports. WCBI News at 6 starts now. And we will have more big news uh, from the big news, rather, from Oxford, as Courtney just mentioned later in sports. But topping the news tonight in Columbus, a police officer is facing charges of domestic violence after a Sunday night incident. Lowndes County Interim Sheriff Greg Wright confirms his department arrested a CPD officer last night. Melvin Shirley Jr. was booked into the Octobaha County Jail about 9.55 p.m. When a law enforcement officer is charged with a crime, the common practice is to move that person out of his or her jurisdiction. He's also charged with residential burglary. Shirley was apparently on duty at the time of the incident. City of Columbus spokesman Joe Dillon says police chief Fred Shelton will request placing Shirley on administrative leave, but since this is a personnel matter, the city has no further comment on it. The Mississippi Bureau of Investigation is handling the case. Law enforcement and first responders work in extremely high stress situations. Sometimes that stress can boil over into their personal lives. Our Cash Matlock joins us in the studio with more on that. Cash? Andrea, when the phone rings or when the scanner goes off, oftentimes law enforcement officers don't know what they might face. Sometimes talking about their problems is the only way to move on, but that's easier said than done. Winston County Sheriff Jason Pugh says just like any job, law enforcement officers deal with mental and physical stress. Some people can deal with stress better than other people can deal with stress, and, and some people need, need help coping with stress. The difference is, if not properly taken care of, officers can end up carrying that stress with them for years. You know, we can bring in a counselor from, from, from our insurance agency, uh, we, and we have, we have offered that several times with, with traumatic incidents that happened. Uh, Pew says it's tough to get members of law enforcement to seek out the help they may need. The biggest problem is getting your officer to say, yes, I have a problem. It's, it's rare for them to do that. Um, we, have, we have offered grief counseling to the whole department after, um, after a disaster in the county. Not a soul took us up. Wendy Woods has been a counselor for 23 years. She agrees that it can be hard to get first responders to share their feelings at first. It can be very difficult for an individual who works in law enforcement or first responders to open up because the nature of their job is to do the job and move on to the next one. And so you don't spend much time reveling or, or talking or thinking about that incident. Sometimes the stress can be too much and in some cases lead to domestic violence. Pew says any officer in the state who's convicted of domestic violence will automatically lose their job. By federal law, he can no longer possess a firearm. And an officer that cannot possess a firearm is actually no good to, to anybody, obviously. So it is a showstopper. Woods says the key to avoiding this is communication. She says it's crucial for an officer to have someone to talk to. It doesn't always have to be a counselor. It can be a friend. It can be a pastor. But truly talking about the day-to-day -day stressors that you are experiencing can help to minimize the physiological impact that the stress can have on the body. According to a study from the National Center for Women and Policing, domestic violence is two to four times more likely to occur in a police family. A timely tip helps the Monroe County Sheriff's Department get a large supply of methamphetamine off the streets. A confidential tip led to over six pounds of ice. The department says the wholesale value of the drugs between thirty and forty thousand dollars. They placed the street value between sixty and eighty thousand. This is still an active investigation. The Sheriff's Department is holding off releasing any further information. A registered sex offender from Prentice County finds himself in jail on new charges tonight. Prentice County deputies have arrested Terry Jean Smith of Marietta for possession of child pornography. Smith is a registered sex offender and is also facing charges in Lee County for failure to register there. His bond is set at $75,000. Smith's case will be presented to the next Prentice County grand jury. It's been nearly two years since two people were found shot and killed on a road in Clay County. Today, Chandra Johnson of Mantee goes on trial for their deaths. The victims were found on Dixie Road.
Kintorio Boyd and Kenya Campbell were both 23 years old at the time of their deaths. Investigators say they both had multiple gunshot wounds. Deputies recovered shell casings from the western Clay County scene. U.S. Marshals arrested Johnson in Memphis a couple of days after the crime. Tiberius Coffee of Calhoun City is also charged in this case. We have a balmy Monday evening out there. Temperatures well into the upper 60s, the mid 60s right now. Live view in Columbus, Tupelo, Vernon, and Louisville. All quiet out there. We have a few showers around the region. Most of us will not see any rain for the near term, but look at those temperatures. Very, very nice. We have some of those Christmas parades out there. Should be pretty good in the near term. But later this evening and later tonight, we are looking at better rain chances. Now, we should be warm through midnight, well into the 60s, and by the time you wake up in the morning, down into the 40s and low 50s, we have some active weather way out west there in Texas and New Mexico. That will actually give us a chance for perhaps a little bit of wintry mix, maybe even a few snowflakes late tomorrow and tomorrow evening with falling temperatures all day long. We'll talk about it coming up. Amory voters go to the polls tomorrow to decide the future of alcohol in their city. The Monroe County town has been dry for more than 100 years, but a petition circulated in the community got enough signatures to bring the matter to the ballot. Now, supporters say the sale of beer and liquor will bring more visitors and money to the city. Those who oppose it say it will bring more problems than benefits. The measure needs a simple majority to pass. The polls will be open from tomorrow from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. We, of course, will track the numbers tomorrow night on WCBI News. Inaugural celebrations for Governor-elect Tate Reeves have been set, and the public is invited to attend. Now, there will be a worship service on Sunday, January 12th, at Galloway United Methodist Church. That will be at 4 p.m., and then a full slate of events is planned for Tuesday the 14th, beginning with the inauguration ceremony. That will be at the state capitol at 10.30 a.m., the inaugural parade will begin at 2 p.m. in downtown Jackson, and there will be an open house at the governor's mansion that afternoon. Then the celebration culminates with the inaugural ball at the Mississippi Trade Mart. That will be at 7 p.m. You can get a full list of the events with additional details at allformississippi.com. So what's in a name? That's, one, that's what one state university is asking its students. Over the last month, the Student Government Association at Mississippi University for Women polled more than 2,000 students to see what they think about making a change to the school's name. Scott Martin talked with students and has their reaction to the idea. Beginning in 1982, the Mississippi University for Women has accepted both men and women into the institution. Since then, some have expressed an interest in a school name that reflects that. John Jacob Miller is the president of the Student Government Association and says some students have said they feel left out. We have a special environment here at Mississippi University for Women. Uh, we're, we're kind of a family, and you never want to have someone left out of the family or someone not included. In October, SGA put together a poll asking students if they'd support a name change. Students could either vote yes, no, or no opinion. Just over 2,000 students took the poll, and of that, 828 voted yes. 703 said no. Miller says nearly 79% of the student body voted in the poll. There is no strong majority one way or the other. So that means that we really have to do some more legwork and get a, a little, do a little bit more elbow grease work to figure out where these numbers lie and why. Students we spoke with have mixed opinions. Caitlin Nodine is following in her mother's footsteps attending MUW. She says she doesn't want the name to change because of the school's legacy. I feel like you don't have to change it. I feel like it's basically saying because it says woman. That's why they want to change it. So I don't think that they should change it just because of that. Freshman Hannah Pettigrew disagrees. She feels the name needs to be more inclusive. She voted yes in the poll last month and says part of the reason the name change is needed is because of the growth at the school, especially its growth in athletics. More people would come if, like, people didn't think it was a women's college, like, whenever they told them, especially for, like, sports and stuff. This isn't something that would happen overnight and isn't anything that's set in stone. The SGA is simply being a voice for the students. No matter the outcome, there's one thing everyone agrees on, and that's keeping the W's legacy alive. We're very proud of our unique little institution and its history, and we want to preserve that the best way that we can. But our students are our lifeblood, and we, it is my job and the job of the entire SGA uh, to represent them at the best that we can. 
And that was our Scott Martin report. Now, there is still a lot of research to be done, including another poll. The SGA has agreed to open up a referendum inquiry, and this will consist of multiple steps. Some of you may remember about 10 years ago, this issue came up. Miller says that played a role in the move to rebrand the school as the W. There is a lot to celebrate at Okalona Middle School. We'll have that story coming up on WCBI News. You're watching WCBI's News at 6 with Andrea Self. Welcome back. Students at Okalona Middle School are learning lessons about hard work and rewards. As Allie Martin finds, progress in the classroom is being measured and celebrated. Rachel Hearn doesn't want any student at Okalona Middle School to miss out on a big celebration. We'll be giving out um, gift cards, so y'all need to come and do your best tomorrow. Hearn is encouraging students to study hard for tests or diagnostics taken as part of the iReady program. That program is used for reading and math, and it helps teachers track a student's needs, personalize their learning, and monitor progress throughout the year. This is the second year Okalona Middle School has used iReady, and Principal Mark Field says the progress has been so good that an honor celebration is set for Friday. Uh, we have kids that, again, with iReady, they're are growing 30 points at times. Um, we have a, a love for learning uh, in the hallways. Uh, things are going in the right direction, have parent involvement. And I want to always recognize those kids and teachers that go above and beyond and do those things to help this school get to where it needs to get. Another key role in the Great Progress Report is community involvement. Principal Fields and the teachers understand that getting the community support is vital for the success of the students and the school. We have other um, community entities that are donating to help make this possible. So it takes a village. It really does. Students are learning that hard work is noticed and rewarded. I learned that when you work hard, you get so much done and you achieve so many goals for not only yourself, but for the whole school. I think it's important because when you get awards, you will try to strive, strive to do more and more and get more awards for it. Principal Fields, teachers, and administrators say the students' measured improvements are proof positive that a district's tax base and wealth do not determine success or failure. In Okalona, Allie Martin, WCBI News. The Oklahoma School District was taken over by the state from 2010 to 2012. The honor celebration takes place Friday morning in the high school gym. All right, so Keith, I got to tell you, I went to the grocery store on my lunch break, and there were a lot of people in there for some reason just sort of on edge about things. It's okay, right? Well, rumor has it there's some snow potential, uh -huh. Andre. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. Don't freak out here, folks. Yes, we have balmy temperatures now. Yes, there will be a cold front coming on in. We'll see some showers later tonight and tomorrow, a cold rain as temperatures fall. And yes, there could be some light wintry precipitation by this time tomorrow, but we don't really expect any or really any big problems here. We'll talk about it. For WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Getting back to Andrea's trip to the grocery store at noon today. We don't really have to panic about a lot of stuff around here. This is the winter weather impact schedule, or uh, let's just say um, index here. We have low impact potential for snow, really no problems here with ice, cold air, power outages, uh, travel impacts. Yeah, there could be a few slick spots and some bridges, especially in the northern areas tomorrow evening and tomorrow night as temperatures cool. But this is going to be a pretty minuscule event, it would appear. So at this point, the best chance for any accumulation, probably north of 82, the closer and closer you get towards Tupelo, uh, maybe a better shot up in here. Uh, we're advertising a coating maybe up to an inch of snow, perhaps a little bit more on grassy surfaces or some trees. If we get a quick burst, those big, fat, wet snowflakes, which tend to happen on the backside of some of this rain, this cold rain as it moves on through this time of year. So here's Futurecast at 3 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow. We're taking the pavement temperature and future cast and combining it here. So notice how these temperatures are still well above freezing 
on the road surfaces into early tomorrow evening. And yes, there could be some big fat snowflakes or some sleet around across North Mississippi, uh, but no major travel impacts are expected during the evening, at least on the road surfaces. Now, bridges could be a little bit different because the cold air can swipe on underneath those bridges and cool the surfaces down of those bridge decks a little bit. So later on in the night, we could have some issues there, especially in the north where we do see some frozen precip. But uh, in general, the, the road surface temperatures don't look to be at critical levels here to support widespread travel issues here. So uh, tonight and tomorrow morning, we are looking at cold rain developing, falling temperatures. And as we get into late tomorrow into tomorrow evening, a chance for some, uh, some of that wintry weather. So we start out tomorrow about 49 degrees, some of you a little bit cooler, cooling on down into the 30s as we go throughout the course of the day. A raw day with winds from the north at about 10 to 20. So enjoy the upper 60s right now. That front will move on through. We'll see that rain and maybe some wintry weather develop on the back side of it. So by midnight, the front will be slicing on through the area. And we'll have the northerly winds take over. Notice the showers during the morning hours into the afternoon, so a good chunk of the day will be rain. And then as we get cold enough in some spots late in the day, a chance for some of that wintry weather. All of this is done by the time we wake up on Wednesday morning. Here's your Accu Weather 70 forecast. So falling temperatures tomorrow, much brighter Wednesday. Not too bad Thursday. Another chance for some showers there Friday. The weekend's looking okay at this point. Another chance for some uh, rain there on Monday. Rebel fans hopping aboard the Lane train and saying choo choo as Lane Kiffin was introduced as the newest leader of Rebel football this afternoon. Those details on Kiffin when we come back after the break. WCDI Sports with Tom Ebel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Welcome to Oxford, Mississippi, Lane Kiffin, the newest head coach of the Ole Miss Rebels, officially introduced today, kicking off a new era for the football program. WCBI Sports' Courtney Robb joins us now live from Oxford with more from a big day on campus. Courtney? Tom, Ole Miss head football coach Lane Kiffin officially being introduced to the public here at the Pavilion this afternoon when Ole Miss athletic director Keith Carter set out to look for the newest, newest leader of Rebel football. He was looking for someone with plenty of experience. Kiffin checking off those boxes as this is not Kiffin's first time in the SEC. No, it's his return to the SEC. Kiffin back in 2009 was the head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers just for one season before he went and spent four seasons at USC as the Trojans head coach. After that, he then went and served as the offensive coordinator under Alabama head coach Nick Saban from the years 2014 to 2016. And following that, he went on to coach at FAU. And you know the story. He had two CUSA championships during his time at FAU. Kiffin, though, remembering his time at Alabama and knowing Ole Miss was a powerhouse going up against the Crimson Tide, and Kiffin coming to Oxford saying that he know he can take Ole Miss back to the program that it used to be that didn't just win 15 games in three seasons. Kiffin believing Ole Miss can do so much more. I remember losing here at Alabama. You know, and, and like I said, we lost two regular season games in three years, both to the same team. And, you know, my brother Chris was here, and so I, and I also spent part of a summer here with the family um, at Chris's house and, and went around and saw the areas and the people and said, that's a special place. You know, that's a really neat place to live. Um, and you can win there because I saw it. No one else was beating us. And so, you know, I always kind of said, you know, that, that's a premier job that at times has performed like that and then times hasn't. You know, that's partly why we're here today. So um, it's our job to bring it back to where it's been before. Coach Kiffin signed on to a four-year deal with the Rebels that will extend through 2023 for a grand whopping total of 16 Point two million dollars over those four years. Granted, yes, there are plenty of different things that can add on to that grand total. Also, in some other Ole Miss news, talking transfers. We've seen a lot of Rebel football players head into the transfer portal so far this season, but as of this afternoon, quarterback Grant Tisdale announcing that he's officially coming out of the transfer portal and will be returning to Oxford to be on Kiffin's squad coming up next season. Reporting here in Oxford, Courtney Robb for WCBI Sports. Tom, I'll go ahead and send it back to you. 
All right, thank you, Courtney. The AP naming its all SEC teams for 2019. A pair of Bulldogs on the list. Running back Kylan Hill named to the first team, and defensive end Chauncey Rivers to the second team. Hill becomes the first running back at Mississippi State named first team all SEC since Anthony Dixon in 2009. And Alabama set in the mark a league high 11 chosen to the all SEC team. That's it for sports. Alaska 3 Weather. Some showers tomorrow, falling temperatures, and we may see a little bit of frozen precip in the region tomorrow evening. Don't panic or anything like that. We'll be back into the sunshine Wednesday, and then uh, typical 50s weather for the rest of the week here, and some more showers possible by Friday. I'm just surrounded by the talk of the town. We got Lane Kiffin to my left and snow to my right. <laughs> well, you're missing something. You got to have some breaking news. I know exactly. Nothing else matters really today. Okay. All right. Good stuff, though, going on in Oxford. That's right. A lot of excitement. And just calm down, everybody. Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> Have a, enjoy the rest of your Monday.